I am not here to tickle your ears, to entertain you. I will talk to you frankly and honestly. The message I bring is not a happy one, but it is the truth. And time is always on the side of truth. As the German philosopher Goethe said, truth must be repeated again and again because error is constantly being preached round about. George Washington stated, truth will ultimately prevail where there are pains taken to bring it to light. To bring the truth to light is our challenge this day and every day. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. How would you have reacted if during the war in heaven someone had said to you, look, just do what's right. There's no need to get involved in the fight for free agency. Now it is obvious that the devil is what the devil is trying to do, but it is sad to see many of us fall for his destructive line. The cause of freedom is the most basic part of our religion. Our position on freedom helps get us to this earth, and it can make the difference as to whether we get back home or not. Next to being one in worshiping God, says President McKay, there is nothing in this world upon which this church should be more united than in upholding and defending the Constitution of the United States. There are some who would have us believe that the final test of the rightness of the court is whether everyone is united on it. But the church does not seek unity simply for unity's sake. The unity for which the Lord prayed and which President McKay speaks is the only unity which God honors. That is unity in righteousness, unity in principle. We cannot compromise good and evil in an attempt to have peace and unity in the church any more than the Lord could have compromised with Satan in order to avoid the war in heaven. To understand the significance of the Constitution, we must first understand some basic eternal principles. These principles have their beginning in the premortal pre councils of heaven. The first basic principle is agency. The central issue in that pre-mortal council was shall the children of God have untrammeled agency to choose the course that should follow? Whether good or evil, or shall I be coerced and forced to be obedient? Christ and all who followed him stood for the former proposition, freedom of choice. Satan stood for the latter, coercion and force. The war that began in heaven over this issue is not yet over. The conflict continues on the battlefield of mortality. And one of Lucifer's primary strategies has been to restrict our agency through the power of earthly governments. There is always a right and a wrong to every question which requires our solution. Unlike the political opportunist, the true statesman values principle above popularity and works to create popularity for those political principles which are wise and just. It is generally agreed that the most important single function of government is to secure the rights and freedoms of the individual citizens. But what are those rights and what is their source? Until these questions are answered, there is little likelihood that we can correctly determine how government can best secure them. Starting at the foundation of the pyramid, let us first consider the origin of those freedoms we have come to know as human rights. There are only two possible sources. 
Rights are either God-given as part of the divine plan, or they are granted by government as part of a political plan. Reason, necessity, tradition, and religious convictions all lead me to accept the divine origin of these rights. If we accept the premise that human rights are granted by government, then we must be willing to accept the corollary that they can be denied by government. I, for one, shall never accept that premise. As the French political economist, Bastia, phrased it so succinctly, life, liberty, and property do not exist because men have made laws. On the contrary, it was the fact that life, liberty, and property existed beforehand that caused men to make laws in the first place. I believe that no people can maintain freedom unless their political institutions are founded upon faith in God and belief in the existence of moral law. I am unalterably opposed to socialism and regard it as an unconstitutional usurpation of power and a denial of the right of private property for government to own or operate the means of producing and distributing goods and services in competition with private enterprise are to regiment owners in the legitimate use of private property. We have strayed far afield. We must return to basic concepts and principles, to eternal verities. There is no other way. The storm signals are up. They are clear and ominous. In a revelation to the prophet Joseph Smith, the Savior declared, quote, I established the constitution of this land by the hands of wise men whom I raised up unto this very purpose, unquote. These were not ordinary men, but men chosen and held in reserve by the Lord for this very purpose. We are the grateful beneficiaries of their noble work, but we honor more than those who brought forth the Constitution. We honor the Lord who revealed it. God himself has borne witness to the fact that he is pleased with the final product of the work of these great patriots. In the revelation to the prophet Joseph, Joseph Smith on August 6th, 1833, the Savior admonished, quote, I, the Lord, justify you and your brethren of my church in befriending that law which is the constitutional law of the land. The Constitution of the United States is a glorious standard. It is a heavenly banner. It is founded in the wisdom of God. The Doctrine and Covenants tells us that the Book of Mormon is the record of a fallen people. Why did they fall? This is one of the major messages of the Book of Mormon. Mormon gives the answer in the closing chapters of the book in these words, Behold the pride of this nation, or the people of the Nephites hath proven their destruction. And then, lest we miss that momentous Book of Mormon message from that fallen people, the Lord warns us in the Doctrine and Covenants, Beware of pride, lest ye become as the Nephites of old. Pride results in secret combinations which are built up to get power, gain, and glory of the world. This fruit of the sin of pride namely secret combinations, brought down both the Jaredite and Nephite civilizations, and has been and will yet be the cause of the fall of many nations. I testify that wickedness 
is rapidly expanding in every phase of our society. Secret combinations, lusting for power, gain, and glory are flourishing. A secret combination that seeks to overthrow the freedom of all lands, nations, and countries is increasing in the evil influence and control over America and the entire world. Joseph Smith said that the Book of Mormon was the keystone of our religion and the most correct book on earth. This most correct book on earth states that the downfall of two great American civilizations came as a result of secret conspiracies whose desire was to overthrow the freedom of the people. And they have caused the destruction of this people of whom I am now speaking, says Moroni, and also the destruction of the people, people of Defi. Now undoubtedly Moroni could have pointed out many factors that led to the destruction of the people. But notice how he singled out the secret combinations, just as the church today could point out many threats to peace, prosperity, and the spread of God's work. But it has singled out the greatest threat as the great conspiracy. There is no conspiracy theory in the Book of Mormon. It is a conspiracy fact. And along this line, I would highly recommend to you a new book entitled None Dare Call It, Conspiracy by Gary Allen. Then Moroni speaks to us in this day and says, Wherefore the Lord commandeth you, when ye shall see these things come among you, that ye shall awake to a sense of your awful situation, because this secret combination which shall be among you. The Book of Mormon further warns that whatever nation shall uphold such secret combinations, to get power and gain until they shall spread over the nation, behold, they shall be destroyed. Now we are assured that the church will remain on earth until the Lord comes again. But at what price? The saints in the early days were assured that Zion would be established in Jackson County. But look what their unfaithfulness cost them in bloodshed and delay. President Clark warned us, that we stand in danger of losing our liberties, and that once lost, only blood will bring them back. And once lost, we of this church will, in order to keep the church going forward, have more sacrifices to make and more persecutions to endure than we have yet known. Now, we have not been using the Book of Mormon as we should. Our homes are not as strong unless we are using it to bring our children to Christ. Our families may be corrupted by the worldly trends and teachings unless we know how to use the book to expose and combat the falsehoods in socialism, organic evolution, rationalism, humanism, etc. Our missionaries are not as effective unless they are hissing forth with it social, ethical, cultural, and educational converts will not survive under the heat of the day unless their taproots go down to the fullness of the gospel which the Book of Mormon contains. Our church classes are not as spirit-filled unless we hold it up as a standard. And our nation will continue to degenerate unless we read and heed the words of the God of this land, Jesus Christ, and quit building up and upholding the secret combinations which the Book of Mormon tells us proved the downfall of both previous American civilizations. We must learn the principles of the Constitution in the tradition of the Founding Fathers. Have we read the Federalist Papers? Are we reading the Constitution and pondering it? Are we aware of its principles? 
Are we abiding by these principles and teaching them to others? Could we defend the Constitution? Can we recognize when a law is constitutionally unsound? Do we know what the prophets have said about the Constitution and the threats to it? Joseph and Harm's trust did not run to the arm of flesh, but to God and eternal correct principles. I am the greatest advocate of the Constitution of the United States there is on earth, said the prophet Joseph Smith. The warning of President Joseph Fielding Smith is most timely. He said, now I tell you, it is time the people of the United States were waking up with the understanding that if they don't save the Constitution from the dangers that threaten it, we will have a change of government. Fortunately, we have materials to help us face this great, uh, this threat, such as President McKay's booklet of statements on communism and the Constitution of the United States, Leon Skousen's book, The Naked Communist, which we were advised to read, other, some other fine books by LDS authors attempting to awaken and inform us of our duty, or such as Prophets, Principles, and National Survival. Many are called, but few are chosen, and the elders of Israel and the Constitution. But the greatest handbook for freedom in this fight against communism and other evils is the Book of Mormon. No nation which has kept the commandments of God has ever perished. But I say to you that once freedom is lost, only blood, human blood, will win it back. There are some things we can and must, and must do at once by concerned Americans if we are to stave off a holocaust of destruction. First, we must return to worship the God of this land, who is Jesus Christ. He has promised that the righteous will be preserved by his power. But we must keep the commandments of God. We must pay our tithes and offerings, keep the Sabbath day a holy day, stay morally clean, be honest in our dealings, and have our family and personal prayers. We must live the gospel. Second, we must awaken to a sense of our awful situation because of this secret combination which is among us, then we must put our trust in him who has promised us his protection and pray that he will intervene to preserve our freedom just as he intervened in our obtaining it in the first place. As the ancient apostle declared, the night is far spent the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. May God give us the wisdom to recognize the danger, the dangers of complacency, the threat to our freedom, and the strength to meet this danger courageously. In this mighty struggle, each of you has a part. Every person on the earth today chose the right side during the war in heaven. Be on the right side now. Stand up and be counted. If you get discouraged, remember the words of Edward Everett Hale when he said, I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, that I ought to do. And what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I shall do. And this is my prayer for you this day. May God bless all of you, each and every one.